In his whole life of entertaining, uh, Bob understood a joke better than anybody, and he was interested in jokes and in doing jokes. And we would do a preview of the show on Sunday, and the show went on the air on Tuesday. And on Sunday, we would do about two hours of material because the writers were getting paid. They might as well try it all out. And our wives would be in the audience, and when they come to a joke, the wife of the writer who wrote that joke would laugh the loudest, you know, and Bob would get a little angry about that. Uh, but at any rate, we would do it, and we also had a system. The writers, we would sit up in the, in the booth above uh, where the audience couldn't hear us, and we could talk, and we would mark the jokes because, again, recording was scratchy. It wasn't worthwhile, and so a check meant that the joke got a laugh. Uh, uh, then a big check meant it was a big laugh. We called it a boff. Then there was a big, bigger laugh, we called it a super boff, and we put a line through the big check. And then we get to, all got together, we'd throw out everything, Bob would say, throw out everything but the super boffs, you know? And we'd put all the biggest laughs together into the show, and then we'd go on the air on Tuesday night, and the show would lay there, it wouldn't get any laughs. Bob could never understand that what was said and what happened between the jokes, and that the smaller jokes built to the bigger jokes, and that you can't just go with the bigger jokes because an audience is connecting and listening and going along with you. So that never really registered with Bob, and throughout everything, uh, he would always try, he would rather do three small laughs than wait to get one big laugh. He was the opposite of Jack Benny. As you know, Jack Benny depended on the delayed laugh, and for the the joke, Milt Josephsberg was writing for Jack Benny at the time when they did the greatest joke, I think. Knowing Jack's, uh, you know, radio character as a skin flint of all time and everything else, he's out on the street and a uh, thug comes up to him with a gun and says, your money or your life. And nothing happened for 36 seconds after that. And the audience had started to laugh and laugh and he waited another 30 seconds and laugh and laugh. And so finally the the uh, uh, thug says, well, and Benny says, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, okay? Well, Bob would never do a joke like that because he, he, he would get more nervous than the thug while he was waiting for the laugh. And, um, well, there's a, a lot of that in motion pictures, too. Uh, and when Bob had complete charge of his movies, all he was interested in was getting laugh, laugh, laugh. You can't do that in a film unless you can find a way to involve an audience in a story. And story in his entire career never really meant that much to Bob. The two films that I directed him in, uh, Seven Little Foys and uh, Bo James, he was not playing Bob Hope, the only time. Uh, in uh, uh, Seven Little Foys, he was playing Eddie Foy, a vaudeville comic, so it wasn't that far away. In Bo James, he played Jimmy Walker, the mayor of New York. And really to his credit, you see, he was uh, embarrassed by acting, and he was a pretty good actor. And we had some serious scenes, and he would always try to break up the crew when he finished the serious scene to prove that he was just kidding about acting. But uh, we did the uh, final scene, almost the final scene of The Seven Little Foys, where it's in a courtroom, and the seven children are gonna be taken away from him. And he makes an appeal to the judge uh, where he says that, uh, you know, he dragged him into show business and didn't mean to. It's the only thing he knew, and he's pleading. And uh, the night before, Barney Dean, who is a little short uh, friend of Bob's gag writer and everything else, and uh, his constant companion, Barney, um, about a month before Al Jolson had died, and the night before we were to shoot this, Bob went to see Barney in the hospital, and Barney was dying, and Barney said to him, is there anything you want me to tell Jolson? And that broke Bob up completely, and he was still in that very down mood when we made the shot, and it was perfect for his mood in that scene. So, yes, he was an actor, but he was helped in that one, and uh, the story had worked so that the audience was with it. And you would think he might have learned a lesson, but after that he went back to the joke, 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 joke. Who am I to complain about a career that's lasted 50, 60 years? I just feel that he should have done many more movies, uh, but the audience had passed him by. They wanted more than just the Bob Hope jokes. And of course, by that time, he had been in television for so long.